Hello. Yes, I do. I'm back, back in my little box, back in here. <laughs> and I am joined by a very special guest today. Um, I'm joined by Matt Hocking, who needs no introduction, to be oh, fair. Really? Uh, yeah. Matt, <laughs> our viewers know you. We've seen you on the show a couple of times before now. Yeah. And we love this segment. We love this hour. We're talking, op well, we've got it in writing behind us. We've got optimism in action. Mm. Um, before we jump into all the creative chaos that we, uh, we love to talk about, <laughs> yeah. I want to quickly go back to the question for the nation that we were just talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, sure. As such a creative human yourself, do you ever get tired? Like, we're talking about how are you feeling in the last few weeks from Christmas to New Year? It's a, it's a really good question because I just speaking to my partner on the way down and I said, I'm, I'm going to be doing my optimism and action piece with chaos. And I said, I'm actually feeling not very active and a little bit tired oh. um, and I never normally get tired I'm always quite like wired my adrenals are like full pump all the time mm. and um, I don't drink coffee or tea or something I'm just normally bang 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 like having my own little dance party in my head <laughs> but yeah I, I don't know if it's over over the Christmas because it's so quiet for me the clients aren't ringing the emails aren't coming in um, I had my children part-time over that period kind of thing I actually did more work and oh, planning okay. for 2022 and this year of, I guess, real action, um, mm. where there might not be time to be tired and, uh, <laughs> and, and active in both myself, you know, um, what I can do for myself and active in what I can do in business. So, yeah, a little bit tired at the moment. <laughs> um, um, but I think you'll fire me up and get me all excited anyway in, 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 those, in those senses. How about yourself? Yeah, no, I think me and Punch this morning, we were talking, we're both... We arrive, we're not morning people. So we, we arrive in the studio in the morning, we're both like, I'm so tired. Mate, yeah. I'm straight on the coffee machine, I'll tell you. Yes. No, but okay. I'm like you, I'm not a coffee drinker, I'm not mm. someone who could take that quick shot to, yeah. to wake well, me up. that morning ritual even. Yeah, 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 so, but yeah, I'm not a full, a full uh, sleepy boy, should I say, but yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I'm in the middle somewhere, I'd okay. say. Okay, so normally but, I don't need much, but um, I have been bad habits over Christmas getting like four or five a.m. sleep furnishing so oh. yeah but then I get a bit annoyed with myself because I really love our natural environment you know with conversation we've had before and yeah. and you know the weather today is I, I mean I love it rain or shine mizzle or or um, dusk sunsets whatever um, but we've got this real beautiful warmth in, mm. in uh, cold nights as I said a gritting night ahead um, but it's mm. just so beautiful at the moment out there and um, I mean I'm quite lucky I'm near Port Pian Beach in Charlestown they're oh, like I li I li where I live in Mount Charles so everything's quite on hand Amazing. so I've got to change my <laughs> habits Wow the thing is because I've I've only met you a couple of times now yeah. and already I, t I can tell what a hard worker you are from the things we've talked about you you give off that vibe that you are very I know you're very creative, but you are go, go, go. Mm. You've got all these ideas and things that you want to, to do. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not surprised you get a little bit run down sometimes. Yeah, I guess but. it's also that, that interesting thing about how you find a story. Like reading a book mm. and you go, oh, i just read another chapter, another chapter. Or Netflix, I'll watch the next one, yeah. hence the whole term binge. And, and then with me... It's those little nuggets of environmental, social action or a new idea. You know, we were just talking about mycelium and uh, mushroom based leathers being like the use for the future of fashion yeah. um, to reduce the carbon footprint and, and the, you know, the, how much cattle and, and, and livestock are used within these industries for you know, sneakers and stuff like that. So I get really excited about these kind of like little kind of rabbit holes and you go down, yeah. and, oh my God, you know, there's that and that. But yeah, I get, that's what fires me up. And then I guess I play, it, it plays forward for me that then I'm a bit tired the next day. So it's about creating balance. <laughs> I like that. That's what life is all about though, yeah, surely. Yeah. Balance yeah. is the key word there. Yeah. Um, and obviously the point of today's discussion, we've got you in, um, for this next segment we want to have just a, a chilled open chat yeah we're going to talk about a few different subjects mm -hmm. and yeah just see what's happening in and around your life and, and in Cornwall and talking about creative ideas yeah um so obviously the last time I saw you was back in the summer it we was were, we were sat in the garden it was wonderful yeah it was we were talking all things g7 and yeah. and climate change and sustainability last time How's life been since <laughs> since we last saw you? Yeah, a great quake question. And firstly, thank you for that, because the reason I'm here is because Chaos and yourself sort of made it so welcoming. And I know you'd only just started yourself then, so 
it made what's always been traditionally uncomfortable for me mm. very comfortable. So this isn't something I'm comfortable doing. I can talk for it, <laughs> for England or any nation, <laughs> but uh, um, but being in front of a camera and being online and stuff like that isn't. I'd rather be in the shadow, so to speak. But I think you know we have to show up in our different ways. And again, that's that optimistic action. So what's been happening? I think um, you know G7 has said. I think everyone knows environment, planet, future is on the, the yeah. agenda at table at different levels and different actions they're doing. Um, alongside everything else our world is experiencing and the population experiencing. So for me, you know, uh, I'm only a small grain of sand. I always say a grain of sand in that sort of scheme of things, but I've been sort of chipping away within the different organizations and sort of abilities I have around my creative role. Um, so the culmination last time we talked, so after the G7, mm. I sort of committed to taking more, being more active. Right. So my action was showing up more. Uh, and then that culminated in an active action, which um, we talked with Pudge last time, which was the cycle to COP. Now, the cycle to COP was brilliant, you know, 540 miles, um, brilliant people that I didn't know at the start, had common ground and we went forwards with. And at COP, we saw this culmination of lots of conversations, lots of talk. And I guess what came out of it for me is there was a lot of talk, a lot of pretty words, but right. not enough action. Ah. Um, and so, but at the same time, I felt that it was a, a clarion call for the public and businesses and, and any individual to go, actually, I, I, I need to take action. And whether it's a, yeah. a 14-year-old, you know, um, lobbying their school to do something more environmental, to yeah. um, to to me showing up more to somebody running for a local leadership role or something. I think action is in the air, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I might be overly optimistic there. Um, and, you know, everyone's already talking about COP27, which is going to be in right. Egypt, of all places. Is it really? Yeah, I'm not cycling to that one. Uh, <laughs> Sign think, up now. I think we figured it would take about 40 weeks or so to go oh and get there God. or something. Um, so I won't be cycling to COP27, um, but also feel don't need to. And at the same time, for me in my sort of in environmental creative space, hmm. I'm being asked a lot to show up and talk in, in, in various ways. So the start of this year, I can't be tired and sleepy um, because <laughs> literally the emails are coming in. Can you do this talk? Can you be here? Would you represent here? So, and, and, and the create, last thing I was going to say is what was really for me as a creative, and mm. although I will always say all of us are creative, every thought is creative. That's what it makes, defines us as humans. Um, what I have found is the creative industries are, are really getting, starting to get behind that they're a key part in the sort of future we need. Mm. And, and my sort of the, like the UK Design Council held the One Planet Festival. And that was really about everything you can imagine, you know, the creators can do. I think Kate Rower said, um, if you're not designing for the planet, what planet are you on? And I sort of just love that mm. quote because- It's a great know, quote. So yeah, so uh, that really sort of sums things up for me. And I feel like, especially over the last sort of well, it's been 18 months, two years nearly now with the pandemic, it's almost kind of forced our hand to be a little bit more creative. Yeah. I know personally from experience, like things that maybe weren't so accessible before, maybe are a little bit more accessible now. Yeah. Um, online communication has been, never been so important. We've yeah. had to adapt to appointments and things that are now going virtual instead mm. of face to face. And that's just another example of forcing our hand. But We've, we've been creative, but we've made it work. Definitely, definitely. And we've made it work rapidly. Mm. And, you know, imagine we galvanised very quickly behind the pandemic. Imagine if we could galvanise for our planet in the yeah. same way, you know, as a united planet kind of thing. So, and it's interesting you say about like our own individual things being forced our hands. Mm. But then if we look at creative expression through science fiction and stuff, this sort of stuff was being talked about hundred years ago, fifty yeah. years ago with various writers and um and so it's interesting how the, the what was once imagination considered imagination, that yeah. human ability to create new ideas is now become reality. And sometimes probably going off on a bit of a tangent here, but sometimes you wonder is like were are the scientists and 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 tech brilliance of our times influenced by watching Star Trek and seeing a little device that they could do this on, you know? 
microwaves, yeah. all of it. It's all kind of magic to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but it is kind of like the, that sort of like that that science fiction, that imagination, that storytelling becoming reality. Mm. Yeah, no, that's that's a great point. And this morning we even read out a news article. Um, I can't remember the exact thing. Budge and I were reading it. It was about. Um, it was mentioning the flights between Newquay to um, London. Only and they were biofuel, was it? Well, it was to do with, I think the council have apologised that they didn't take into account um, the climate issues and things. And we, Oh, wow. Yeah, Pudge, <laughs> I don't know, Pudge, if you can remember much of that story we read this morning, but I remember it being really, really interesting how they've actually issued like this apology now. Yeah, that um, is really interesting because I, I was a bit unsure when I, I don't do a lot of news, I'm afraid, so it sounds bad. Right. I do a lot of research, but that's kind of linear to the things I want to find out about and materials and stuff in the work I do. But to keep me my own optimism there in a stubborn, I'll say stubborn optimism, <laughs> I actually shut down a lot of the news channels because you end up just, just hearing the bad stuff. Yeah. You know, there, there's a term, good news doesn't sell. So, um, <laughs> and so I, I've kind of filtered my own system. So I didn't know that, but I did see the, the flight happen. Yeah, see, this is, this is what we were, <laughs> Cornwall Council for, for policy failure. So yeah, serious omission. Wow. Yeah. We, we, I like, and it's a bold, serious omission, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. it was a, a big story this morning that, that sort of come out and I just thought it was important to mention because yeah, it's, yeah, we're talking about the climate and our world and how they mentioned, they, yeah. They that, forgot to use this wheel. The Donut Economics, yeah. which is by Kate Roweth, who I just mentioned. She's ah. the, the lady that created the Donut Economics model. Oh, wow. So, um, so if she's saying, you know, if it's not designed for the planet, what planet are you on? I yeah. think it's with anything we do now. And I think, yeah, uh, th that's really interesting. So I'm going to have to look at the news now. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Find out more. No, no, that's fine. But also it's, it's in the sphere of what I love because it's interesting that at some point, somebody's had to make them accountable mm. yeah. to that and said, why have you sort of said that? Because I think maybe sometimes, I was talking with Henry earlier, <laughs> slightly going off on tangent from power of creativity, <laughs> but it's like the whole tree planting, everybody's kind of planting trees and going, oh, I, cool, I can plant a tree, I can fly, I can plant a tree, I can eat whatever I want and stuff like that. And sort of, yeah, you can, but actually just planting trees isn't gonna solve the sort of the issues of our time. And again, yeah. we've got to look at this, what our own individual actions can be that kind of, again, what I always say, work for ourselves, bring happiness into our lives um, and feel like we are, you know, doing something. Yeah. And I love what you said earlier as well. It's, it's all very well talking about it, yeah. but it's actually, these yeah. words can sound as fancy as anything, but it's actually having a plan or doing something about it. That's, yeah. That's the thing, isn't it? Yeah, totally. And I think so, there's a, a booklet um, I read years ago um, from one of my sort of sort of favourite. I'm not allowed. To, I don't know if I'm allowed to say brands and things. Yeah, go there. for it. It's fine. So uh, at the time, it was one of my favourite companies, a company called Howie. So when I first got into my sort of environmental creative action back in sort of the 2000 period, um, there was a, an organic clothing company, and sort of just there were these spots of brilliance out there in the sort of the world. So I just loved. Love their brand, love what they were mm. doing, and also loved the product. And it was within my sort of price bracket I could right. afford. But they um, brought out a book, the founder, David Hyatt, brought out a book called The Path of the Doer. And it, okay. I love books that only take a few minutes to read, <laughs> 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 that are not just children's books. <laughs> any, <laughs> any pictures in them as well? <laughs> There's a few pictures, yeah, I like a good picture. But um, it's called Path of the Doer, and it's about this size, and it's nicely designed, so it appealed to me creatively. But it was really that 99% of all ideas are never acted upon. It's only the 1% that really happened. So, okay. And it was basically empowering people to be, be the 1%. Okay. Um, and I think it is, I think consciously, there's loads of ideas all the time. You know, mm. you see films that look really the same and go, they're pretty much the same script, they yeah. just come out. Did, did they just steal the idea from each other? There's somebody behind the scenes sharing it? Or was it was two people actually consciously came forward with that idea, pitched it to two different film studios, they went for it without knowing the other was doing it and things. Yeah. So, and so I, I believe many ideas manifest simultaneously across the globe, but only a few of us sort of act upon them and like stand up and go, this is my belief, this is, um, this is my action and, and this, this fires me up and this is my fuel. Yeah, that's fantastic. Now, we want to talk about creativity. Yeah 
today, and I want to steer us a little bit towards Goodfest. Okay, yeah. Goodfest Cornwall. Mm. 2022. Yes. It's coming. It is. I believe that it's going to, fingers crossed, be in person, face to face this yeah, year. Yeah, that, that is our big hope. I mean, yeah. Good Fest is a stubborn birthing of a creative idea about gathering a bunch of individuals by the beach um, to talk about, have creative conversations, not necessarily about creativity, mm. just creative conversations around change we can make for ourselves, for the world, in business, for society, for our communities. Um, and it came from a group, there was a, a big group of people just talking about it. And it was a kind of a, originally in 2019 and before that when we've had the initial ideas, which I came in late to, um, it was kind of more about like a gr group of people in Cornwall getting to meet 60% of the group from out of Cornwall and, and showing off our wonderful county because we are very lucky and privileged to mm. work, live in uh, work in such a wonderful county, even though it's got its you know ups and downs in in everything from wage to uh, transportation and access <laughs> and things, and so we we pulled it off, you know it happened and it was brilliant and actually the ripple effect a couple of years on this year I've heard of from Goodfest twenty twenty one which was online, which we had comments like oh this was the close to coming to a real life experience online since we've been on Zoom which is really nice. Yeah. Another person that had been unemployed for 10 years, um, I think single mum, managed to get meet somebody in a breakout room of that one and has got a job now working for them oh, wow. in environmentalism, which she learned um, while bringing up her children. And then another lady, Lucy Bunce from Big Small Good, um, she, um, she quit her job after Good Fest 2019 of 11 years to go on her own business path. And, this year, she's just become a B Corporation like Leap, so a business that's certified for good and uses it as a business as a force for good. So we've had some great outcomes. So 2022, we haven't got a theme yet. Okay. Because we've decided we, we're going to just do it, and it's, we're, gonna, we're just looking at booking somewhere on the north coast, probably sort of Bedrutham Way or something like that. Nice. Um, and then we've been having lots of conversations, so what it will look like. So if, I'm going to just throw ideas out there because mm. we haven't, we haven't got any confirmation. We haven't got any money to make this happen at the moment okay. or anything. But I think sometimes you just got to, again, act upon yeah. it and be optimistic that we're, <laughs> it's going to happen. So I met some beautiful people doing beautiful things on my ride to COP. And it, our ride to COP was called Ride the Chain. So 540 miles from London to um, Glasgow. And so that was organised by two organisations called Adventure Uncovered and Break the Cycle. And they're all kind of about showing sort of environmental and social issues while passing through areas and, and stuff. So, and when we got to Dundee, they did a little sort of climate um, film festival. So it's like two hours okay. in a little community centre. And we had two hours. We had a wonderful speaker, James Lavelle, who travelled, um, I think, money, money free or something to, to South America to ask the question about what do young people over there want to happen for the future of wow. the planet kind of thing. So it's really good. So the idea is we'll have the festival as an option to go to, which yeah. will be two days on the cliffs of Cornwall, um, some good food and some good conversations with some good people that will hopefully stimulate more change in action. Hoping to tie that in with a ride the change from London to Land's End with an option wow. to then attendees to come to the festival and while on that cycle to again stop at community centres and spaces on the way down, hear about what's happening in those communities and, uh, and then sort of galvanise them into the conversations that may happen at Goodfest. And I've just had an idea while doing that, wouldn't it be good to get some of our cyclists to actually be the speakers at the festival? Oh yeah. So they could tell their own experiences and stuff like that. So that might be something. <laughs> so, so just popped know. in your head. So yeah. So and um, there's a few of us. There's uh, myself and um, Laura Giles, who's behind Screen Cornwall, um, and then um, in Bristol there's a, a, a chap Ben Akers and his partner Claire, and they run something called Talk Club, which is um, a sort of a, a, a mental um, uh, wellness charity for for men. So sort of on a one scale to one ten, how are you okay. feeling today? Um, and sort of a network of support, basically. So, um, so yeah, so Goodfest is coming, and we've got a bit of time to make it happen, um, and we'll be going out to see if we get some sponsors. Actually, saying that, we have had people come to us and say yeah. we'd like to support it. So, um, so, yeah, and for me, 
conversation is it's great, but conversation that's stimulated by maybe hearing somebody else, and then you're with the crowd that's been listening yep. and having that time to have the conversations between the conversation. I think that's where the pure magic happens. Yeah, you never know. That's the joy of it. You never know where these connections are going to come from. Yeah. Like you said, for that lady to go into a little breakout room and then now she's got a job in a I field know. that she could have only dreamt of Yeah, is amazing. And it wasn't an outcome. We didn't even think about that. Yeah. And so what one of the things I want to do this year is gather the stories of Good Fest. And, you know, there's a lot of festivals out there, whether it's music, ideas, um, um, you know, but for me, having this in Cornwall, is it just to mm. hold those conversations, but also be inspired by what's around us. Uh, and what we've always done in the past is there's been a certain number of tickets that um, uh, locals can kind of apply for, so they're right. fr they've been free, and whether we can do that again this year. Um, so trying to support that, because again, sometimes we don't have the money to go to all these things, and it's kind of how do we make things a, more of a level playing field for it, accessibility for all yeah so yeah that's Amazing. one of the one of the uh one of the <laughs> many things that are on the on the cards and uh, you oh. just remind me i've got to push a bit further <laughs> with that one so no set dates or times yet but you're working well on it. it will be yeah. either the we're just, we we have got a venue okay we're trying to just wake out the price actually we're <laughs> gonna we're, if we have it we're gonna hold it at the previous venue but i just wait wait to reveal that yeah those that have been to good festival kind of know what that is cool. um and so we're looking at the last Thursday and Friday of September or the first Thursday and Friday of October. Okay. Um, and then the idea with that as well is that, you know, come to Cornwall, pause, get stimulated in these creative conversations and maybe have time to stay and do something yourself afterwards before you, yeah. you rush back to wherever you've come from. Yeah, I mean, you had me when you said good food and good company. <laughs> what more could you want, to be fair? But, but this is true. I mean, I think it's always essential to have a good mix of anything, um, uh, of food. Like I ran an event um, in October, me and a guy called Russell, who co-chaired Be Local Cornwall Plus. So it's kind of the B Core movement for, the, right. uh, for Cornwall and Devon and beyond the business that are B corporations in, in Cornwall already and then anybody interested. But we held that old bakery studios and we had the chef Ben Quinn who runs Canteen Cornwall and, okay, yeah. and Nuki Orchard Canteen as well. And Ben was down as an attendee and he just messaged me and just said, do you want some food for the night? And we Amazing. didn't even think to ask. And I was like, if you're offering <laughs> and it really made it. And he just did really simple like focaccia with little tasty bits on top. And we didn't charge anybody to come. Um, Leap sort of um, financed it and stuff. Old Bakery Studio supported it. And we just had a really good night. And on a wet and windy night, with the, the rain coming down, like 75 people turned up to hear a bunch of us talk wow. around the things we're doing in business to make, make a difference while running our businesses. So I, I love that. And you are right. A bit of food. And it had a bar, which you had to pay for. I think mix those two together is <laughs> good. And the first Good Fest we did, um, Ben actually helped out on that, but we had a long table. Um, so 100 people all on one table, and um, we just set the meal, and the, the weather played ball, and it was just okay. fantastic. So I think when you create an experience, it's curating it as best you can. Yeah. So some of us res respond to the, the speech, some of us respond just to time out, the atmosphere, others who they met, others yeah. the food. <laughs> <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah, so for me, there's many little, little hooks in there to, to get people excited and Make, you know, that they can make a difference, yeah. that they can take action is, is, is the thing for me. Fantastic. And talking of along the lines of festivals, obviously the Creative Coalition yeah. is coming up. How does that differ from Good Fest? So Creative Coalition, I've been asked to represent the creative sector um, mm. alongside a number of other speakers on a panel. So it's a free online festival that attracted over 10,000 people worldwide last wow. year. It's put on by Creative UK. And um, so I've been asked to be on a panel around the climate emergency. Oh. And so it's it basically it's asking, well, say climate and ecological emergency, because I think it's, there's two things that we should have on the t table that are happening. Right. It's not just climate. It's, it's everything on the planet as well. And um, so I've been asked to be on this panel, answer that question alongside another number of other speakers. So they've got a, a poet, uh, an actress, uh, actor, um, um, and various other people, filmmaker. Okay. And I think it's all represented for us in our craft 
what we're doing to address and when when maybe we started on our journey to be tackling the issues mm. of our times with our, the way we do our work and our craft. So that's going to be on the 1st of February. Okay. I'm fairly unprepared for that. <laughs> um, and just because I've got, there's quite a lot to get through. And I mean, the good thing is I can talk from the gut. I'll say the mm. heart because my, it's, the gut is where my stuff happens rather yeah. than here. The head stops you doing a lot of things. Uh, we were talking about earlier, like I can't necessarily repeat a quote that I might make because it will just be gone in yeah. a flash because it's come from here and the heart and stuff. In the moment kind of so, thing. But our one, although it's online, our one subject to what's happening with COVID and stuff will be mm. filmed at Eden with Brilliant. a panel live um, there. So it'll be a live um, stream. You can just go to the um, put in Creative Coalitions 22 and it comes up with everything. So uh, sounds good. And they've got some, you know, very big speakers from you know um, various big big industries. Yeah. Um, so it's it's real proud to be involved, but at the same time, that showing up it slightly makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, what an honour that must be for you to actually be invited as a speaker. That obviously proves. <laughs> You know that people respect you and the work that you do so that must be a real honor uh, yeah definitely definitely um uh, but again i guess this is where i in the demons the head bit comes in where you go uh, actually there's better more eloquent speakers than i that that could be mm. there that would get to the point i'm just being honest kind of thing and again my optimism in action is to put myself into uncomfortable spaces <laughs> yeah. so, and, um, and and show up and then swiftly from creative coalitions the week after um the i mayflower sort of network up in plymouth are running something called um spillover right which again i'll be talking about creativity the you know what the role of the creative in the sort of in environment this sort of climate and ecological emergency can do which may seem overwhelming just you know i'm, I'm aware that we're talking and people could be listening and and going, oh my God, this is this is a bit too big and a bit too much. I can't do anything to to make a difference, but this is where it comes into. It's the actions that we feel we can do ourselves, and mm. and that may be something small, just going off and doing some litter pitting. And you could say that does nothing in the scheme of things, but actually, if it makes you feel better, that's a yeah. start, and it may encourage others, you know, to take action. And go, oh, actually, you you doing that? I would. I, can I come out for a walk for you? Then you're having a walk and then you're talking about things. We talked about talk it out. Yeah. So you're in a space outside, maybe with new people. So there's the action happening there and then you, the magic of what may come from it. And I love that. And I've got a friend um, who I'd love to bring on sometime called Pat Smith, Action Nan. Right. I don't know if you've heard of her. No. So Pat is... Uh, Did you say Action Nan? Action Nan. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we designed a logo for her. It's of her, like a little caricature of a parachuting lady with a dog. <laughs> Um, and Pat is brilliant and it'd be really great to hear from her um, as an older, older than me person, because I'm older than you. Um, <laughs> and she's out most days, beach cleaning, litter picking, but wow. galvanizing her community and other communities like Mever to, to look after the community. Brilliant. And you could say, well, should they be cleaning up after others? But there's always going to be litter, plastic waste coming in until we, we figure yeah. out how to upstream stop the plastic problem um so pat is out there and actually she's she's appeared all over the world and to such an extent that we had a conversation just before christmas um we went out um for one of our kind of catch up she's kind of a, a client that's become a good friend nice. and um and she's like what, what matt what would a global action nan network look like because i'm being asked by other nans around the world that <laughs> i'm an inspiration to wow. could we do something so we're looking at a global action nan network Okay, we need to get <laughs> we need to get so I'd like to get, I'd like to get Pat in, in at some point, and maybe like with yourself and Pudge, like just have both of us on on the uh, yeah. on the sofa. Oh, that sounds and, great! But just another, you know, for me, that's like that hopeful, optimistic action. Yeah. You know, um, you could say should uh, an elderly lady be? Um, she might tell me off for saying that term. <laughs> I'm being really bad, probably, with my terms. Um, should should anyone be on a beach having to pick up litter? and stuff but people are on beaches they are walking their dogs and things so there is an opportunity to do it while you do it it's a two minute beach clean movement by martin dory as well which yeah. is all around just spend two minutes on a beach whatever you pick up in two minutes take it off the beach yeah i mean we've just had just before your hour sort of 
before you arrived today. We just had a whole segment with the Beach Guardian. Oh, um, Emily, yeah. Emily, yeah, and she's, she's amazing. Yeah, yeah, and the work that she does. So it yeah. is so true. If we all just did a little bit. Yeah. It, it sounds cliche, but every little helps. I think it's, it? it's doing something rather than doing nothing, you know, yeah. and being somebody rather than leaving it to somebody else. And again, always coming back to that optimism in action is there is a, a, we know that we, you know, most people get a buzz if they've held a door open for someone or helped someone just said, are you okay? You know, and yeah. um, it might mean nothing, but for that person to, the, they might live by themselves and for somebody to acknowledge them. Just yeah. those little sort of simple things. And, and again, that's where our action can be anything. I mean, funny enough, I've got a book. Um, which I haven't read yet, but um, Agadja Udedra, um, it's um, Do Something Activism for Everyone. Um, and it just says on the back, this is my Christmas present to myself. <laughs> nice. um, my, my daughters don't get me anything anymore. Uh, they, give, they give me like vouchers, say I'll give you a hug or we, we'll go out for a walk with you without um, causing a problem. <laughs> 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 Going, oh dad, do we have to? <laughs> um, you don't need to be a certain type of person, a politician or in a powerful circles to create change. You just need to know how to use the tools at your disposal in the most effective way to create maximum disruption. And then disruption could be, I'm not saying about disruption and blocking roads and things like that, but just being disruptive um, in different ways. Greta Thunberg did that yeah. by, she wasn't causing a problem other than she wasn't attending school, sitting outside with a placard day in, day out. Yeah. And now she's managed to make the happen through people believing in her, the well, the greatest, I think the biggest, largest gathering of people in a single climate strike in the, in the world. So from small acorns, as they say. Yeah, everyone's got to start yeah. somewhere, isn't it? Yeah, and like Babs as well, you know, see see what she's galvanised and what chaos has become. Yeah. Um, and that she's like non-stop everywhere, <laughs> optimism, brightness, you know, what we need in our day. Kind of yeah. thing. And now, now we have to curtsy and bow to her. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Did she pay you to say that? <laughs> no, I just like to tease her about it. <laughs> and I want to talk as well. We briefly had a, a quick conversation about it before, sort of off camera this morning. Um, you mentioned this thing called the board meetings. Yes. And I want to mention it because I think it's absolutely fantastic and I love it. And it's along the lines of optimism, creative. It's, it's thinking outside the box. And yeah. as an employer, I think it's a really smart and clever move to build on relationships and honesty and openness within your team. Yeah. Um, tell us a bit about what, what's a board meeting? <laughs> well, this is, so we've got two different things. So within the, the, the board meeting is actually a lot of individuals who run their businesses have always been asked for advice. To tell you the truth, I'm, I'm sort of winging it in business. I'm just doing what my gut tells me to, what, but based on my mm. values to make a difference while making a living. And the board meetings were around the idea that I love nature, I love surf cycle, walking, we live in a beautiful natural world, but I wasn't getting out in it enough. And it's my own fault that my computer is calling to me more than nature was. So I tried to turn it around to get the best for me in a way. Yeah. I could call it a selfish board meeting. <laughs> and the idea was certain clients that I know would probably like the idea of it. I was saying, do you just... You fancy a board meeting because it is about advising where your business is going. So like a, a board, you know, executive board or something. Yeah. But the idea is we go out on a paddle board or a kayak or a surfboard or, you know, whatever, really. And we have a conversation. So I took a couple of individuals out and it was, I, seismic is my word of the year, by the way. Um, well, I'll find out what your word of the year is. <laughs> oh, gosh. So I, you'll hear me use the word seismic about change. For me, there was a seismic shift. I got real brilliance out of it. But what I noticed for those that I took on at board meetings, rather than a cliched meeting where we talk over everything, how's your finances, how's this, how's that, those individuals talked about the heart, the reasons why, you know, the, the, the why their business existed and what they hoped for it and the problems, the things that might be holding them back. And there's always something holding us back. If we, if we care for something, there's always, I would say from my experience, a care point where you might be risk averse because you're, you're, you're more careful about your people, your footprint and the environment. So yeah. yeah, it's getting out in nature. So I just tried them just out of Port Pier, my local haunt. I wouldn't want to go out on a board meeting on a, uh, a busy, like a, you know, kind of a, a big tide day or something like that. I wouldn't. Yeah. And obviously I'm not a lifeguard. I'm not there to save them. So I've got to hope that they know how to paddleboard and it's not the first time. But, but for me, 
it was just being in nature, talking about business, mm. and that's again, that creative way that, how do you get sometimes the things that you'd like to do, but be creatively look about, you've got to do them, they're part of your yeah. job or they're part of your day to day. How can you just twist it to work for everybody? But it's been so successful. I've, I've, taken, I've had loads of different ones now. And then it's got to the stage, I've got, I did one in Exeter with uh, an ethical eyewear company on the 22nd of December. So we went down the canal in Exeter. So we did a traditional kind of sort of SWOT analysis, strengths, right. weaknesses beforehand. And then we just did a couple of hours on the canal. Amazing. And it was just, it was just great. And then, then in February, I'm up to Brighton to do one with the same guy from his business, so this ethical eyewear company, Pala. And, um, but he's now saying, oh, there's a couple of other businesses. Could, could they come along? And I was like, ooh, okay. Oh. <laughs> um, I don't know what it would be like in a group scenario, but yeah. I'll give it a go. Explain that I'm not here to save your life and, yeah. <laughs> and things like that, and just have an open conversation. And I, I think yeah. also we both get stuff out of it. And then going back to like Leap as a business, i firstly state that Leap is by no means perfect as a business. We, we'll get the people, are people happy? They'll be unhappy, they'll be stressed. You know, we are like any other business. We just, we acknowledge and we're open that there's always improvements to be made. But one of the things we brought in, and Simon, our managing director, who's also chair of Falmouth Surf Lifesaving um, crew, right. but we like walk it out. So rather than come into to work, say you've, you know, as we said, something happened in the night, you just had a bad night, it doesn't matter what it is, or you fell out with your partner, or you were just stressed about something, yeah. and you've come into work and you've brought that energy where, where you're just not feeling good, but people can feel that, yep. and everyone gets a bit quiet. It affects everyone, stuff, yeah. doesn't it? So the idea is you grab a member of the team, we've got, got, got a policy around this, and you just disappear, and you, for an hour you go for a walk and you just air it, and the other person's there yeah. to listen, not provide a solution. Okay. Um, and that's just become like a norm of our business now. And we do it with clients, sometimes we'll go out for a walk, and, um, but I, I do a, a monthly catch up with my team, I go through a different team member, I take them out and just hear how they are in, in the business, how they're feeling, what more could we do. And um, Jesse, who's one of our new recruits, she's only been with us like three months, was, could, I, could we do a walk it out rather than have a bite to eat? And I was Aww. like, yeah, of course, we'll just yeah. go for a walk. So, um, so I'm down to Falmouth, we'll meet at Gilly, and we'll just go for a walk and talk. It. And, um, and it's good for all of us, you know? Yeah, I love it's that. It's a win, win for the environment, a win, a win for our, our pockets, really, in a way, because we're not buying a meal. We're, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then a win, you know, win for the health. Just walk it well. out, isn't it? Yeah, and our minds. I love that. Brilliant. Well, Matt, thank you so much for coming on today. And sadly, we are running out of time. I don't know if there's anything else you want to mention or chuck in before we have to finish up. But... I think, I mean, originally we were going to talk like about the power of creativity. And as always, it can go off in different ways. And, yeah. But I think the power of creativity is, is really that we've got our own ways that we can self-actualize a, a creative action. We might not, you know, creativity to some will be drawing and another to writing. Another will just be yeah. doing something different. So I think for everybody to just sort of like empower themselves to what could their creative action be um, to make a difference for them, their world, their community, their family, their friends and things. So I'd really be interested to hear on those. And I do need to find what's your word of the year? My word of the year. If you had one word oh. that you think it, it, you're feeling for the year. I think for me, it's probably it sounds really like a, a simple word, but change. Yeah, because I'm a very, I'm quite set in my ways. Okay. I've got quite a very routine based life. Mm -hmm. And the last sort of 18 months has been a lot of change yeah. for me as somebody who was shielding throughout the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My whole employment, everything was flipped upside down and mm. now I'm here. So yeah, yeah, I would say, I would say change. Yeah, yeah, where you're riding change That's well my then. Word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. So, but yeah, I like that. Pudge, I want to throw it back to you. What, I'm going to put you on the spot in the studio. What's your word? Uh, well, see, I had already thought about this one, so nice try. But going <laughs> along the lines with, uh, of you um, with change, I'm thinking strength. So the strength is to be able to hold fast through this everlasting storm that we all seem to be going through and also have the strength to maintain ourselves in regards to things like change and doing the right things as maybe doing the right things become harder in life. And, uh, yeah, being a bit creative with uh, our ways of doing things as well, bringing it back to the creativeness there, trying to, oh, trying to keep on topic. <laughs> I like that a lot. Is it strength because you also told me you joined a gym this morning? 
Let's yeah, let's move on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I have a it, it, It's going to be strength to try and make sure I keep going along as well. well I like yeah. I like I like strength version, but I also like you use the word hold fast. Yeah, I love that too. And somebody else um, in the Midlands said revel. I love revel. Mm. Um, they're going through some quite. Um, big ups and downs, but they got to revel in the happy times and, and the stuff that they've got. And I, you don't hear the word revel. I do That's love nice. revels in the chocolate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, Not the coffee um, one. But I, I, nope. love, I, love, you know, I love the power of words as well. And although I did say the line, um, no more pretty words, let's take action. That's more around kind of like they, the, the, the words, um, you know, yeah. the bigger organisations use sometimes to soothe the fact that they aren't <laughs> taking action. But no, I'd be really interested in any other people's hmm. um, you know, word of the year, and then to see at the end of the year, how did it manifest? But I reckon it's a seismic change year, a year of, a year of action. Um, we are going to be in the long haul of what the pandemic is. It'll probably be an endemic, I guess they're going to declare. So, um, um, but um, yeah, what actions people will be taking. But thank you for having me on and letting me, me talk. And, Anytime. And you, you know, coming back to my first conversation with Chaos was with you anyway. Yeah, so, full yeah. circle. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic stuff. Thank you very much there to Matt Harking. And obviously, Ross, I will see you in a moment, my friend.